Welcome back, everyone. We're here at Cool Club's headquarters in Scottsdale. Happens to be the home of Ping 2. We're here with CEO and founder of Cool Club's Mark Timms and back with VP of Fitting and Performance, Marty Jertson. Welcome back. Oh, excited to be here and uh, really excited about the topic for uh, today's pod. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested to hear about it. To be honest, I, I missed when Mindy came by and showed this stuff to everybody. I mean, I've seen the pictures, obviously, but I uh, haven't hit it or anything. So I'm going to let you do most of the talking. I mean, the one thing I see on here is the turbulators, which I'm sure you're going to touch at some point. They look bigger to me. And I had a question earlier that you're going to fill in at some point. Uh, you know, obviously, there's for aerodynamics and speed, but do they do anything for stability and how the head wants to rotate? That's yeah, exactly. Question. So, yeah, the turbulators, uh, they do look bigger, but it's a relativity thing. So, actually, the face size is a little smaller, a little shallower on the G430 yeah. driver. We're doing that to get more ball speed. It's a little better aerodynamically, right. overall reducing the frontal area. Uh, and then we've, we've been able to do that in combination with thinning the face. And we're, we're seeing way higher ball speed. So I think people with our – Pink's kind of turned into a little bit of a driver company now. Like, yeah, okay. Like, like okay. people yeah. love yeah. our drivers. Well, I mean, to be Let's honest, everyone it. kind of knows. I mean, it's definitely been the most forgiving driver in, yes. in a lot of years, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and that's kind of what it's known for. Um, but apparently this but, year we're talking about yeah. distance. So. But, but forgiving doesn't mean short. In fact, nope. if it, forgiving means if you miss average it, it longer. You, you, you average right. longer. Absolutely. So, so absolutely. absolutely. So the G430 builds upon all the horsepower we've had in our G, G, G driver family, including the, the turbulators. Uh, but shallowing the face height, thinning the face, and we've done some really cool things with the face design. And you're, you'll you'll notice this for sure when you do your robot testing. Okay. Um, when you impact it around the face, so it's just there's a lot packed into the G4 driver family. It's aerodynamically superb. So those those turbulators, uh, you know, you can see these on the side of like a lot of side view mirrors in cars. Yeah. Because yeah. car designers hate side view mirrors. They like ruin the aerodynamics. Oh, so yeah. you see these little ridges and bumps. They're angled. Those do exactly the same thing. They create a micro layer of turbulence. Uh, but it disrupts the airflow as the air is flowing over the crown of the driver and it keeps it sucked to the back of the driver so you don't get this vacuum effect. So gotcha. normally if you didn't have those, and there were some drivers out there that had really flat crowns or swoop crowns back in the day, those are exactly like a pickup truck where you get this uh, area of low pressure that sucks the driver backwards, you know, gotcha. applies the force backwards. And aer Aerodynamics matter for everybody. Yes, they do help the fast swing speed players more. Right. Um, and but uh, but yeah, the the turbulators look big because the uh, the face height is subtly a little shallower on the G430 yeah. driver. Yeah, I, I was lucky. I got to see it firsthand uh, a little while ago, and uh, that was the first thing that popped out. Is I think when I first saw G G30 and I saw the turbulators, you're like, whoa, this is different. And, yeah. and this kind of had that same feeling again. It was like they're they're back. Yeah, you know, and they've yeah. always been there, but they're 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 back in a bit of a stronger fashion. Yeah. And we've really, we've talked about acoustics with the I-230 iron and our ability to model it more right. in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the design world. So what you see, and you see on the screen here, is we have the LST, which is our low spin driver. So we have LST low spin. We got the MAX, which is the highest moment of inertia. So the name kind of speaks to that. And then we have SFT, which stands for straight flight technology. And we have some new fitting in the SFT where now it also has a CG shifter. So it has a draw position. Right. And then we have what we call the draw plus. We touched, ah. we touched on that in, <laughs> the, in, the, in the Arcos data. Everyone so still misses right. Everybody still misses right. You, yeah. you, you, you know, yeah. for those golfers that need it. And then we're doing some really fun things where we're optimizing the head weight more. Head weight slash swing weight, but we're really focused on head weight to get the optimum momentum for different swing speeds of golfers. So we're changing, you'll see that our standard right. kind of swing weights vary a little bit more. Okay, and that's that's meant to maximize my, uh, ball speed more. But what's what you can see here on the screen, that's our LST driver. And we have composite back on the LST. So the first time since our Rapture series right. driver, we're yeah. putting composite on the driver. Which killed it. Still kills it today. Every now and again, yep. someone comes in with one of those, and I'm like, yeah. oh, well, we're not getting anything new here. <laughs> exactly. And that driver sounded awesome. Yeah, right? it did sound good. And, and the funny, I mean, the, the G430 driver is a horsepower of technology and performance, but the first thing golfers are going to notice is the acoustics are phenomenal. Like okay. overwhelming, uh, especially the LST driver. They, but they all sound good. Even though the Max doesn't have composite in it, the acoustics are phenomenal. Every head sounds great. I mean, it's so satisfying. I've been I've been playing mine for a for a few weeks now, and it is so satisfying to the soul when you hit the hit the LST driver. Yeah, explain quickly what you're talking about. Um, you know, you said modeling the sound and stuff. So, so what essentially is going on now is you, you know you get these 3D CAD models and stuff, yep. and, and the vibrations and how it hits impact. 
kind of tells you what the sound's going to be ahead of time. So you're kind of planning before you have to get to the testing stage. Exactly. So you can do a lot more iterations and mess with things yep. before you actually go build a prototype. Yeah, you can do virtual prototyping. Right. So instead of prototyping by welding or right. casting and waiting all this time to make the parts, now you do it on the computer, you set up your model. And, and it's, it's getting still, pretty good now, right? It, and it takes a lot of computing horsepower. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so and we're getting better and better. And, and we're getting better at understanding what to do with the results, how to right. interpret them, how to predict the sound, what are bad frequencies, what are good frequencies. You know, not all frequencies are bad. Some you want to try to yeah. at attenuate. Yeah. And others you want to kind of dampen out. I think yeah, I, you make it totally dead and it feels like you don't hit anything. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Give, uh, give, I mean, making it about ping, I think it'd be a nice and that, like, is there an, 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 an analogy between the G430 and the G425 sound? Like, could you tell us what the difference is? Oh, yeah. So G425 might have been a little louder, like a little tinkier sounding. You know, some of the higher right. frequencies lasted a little bit longer, kind of crept in there as primary modes. The 430 is has a deeper thud characteristic to it. So it right. still feels like you, you, you know, you're getting a lot of ball speed. But the sound is shorter. Like the the, yeah, the yeah. time domain of the sound is shorter. I'm a thud. Right? Oh, I love a thud oh. drive. When you hit it, it's just like a bump. And yeah. you're like, you, okay, you're, that was good. You're, you're going to love it. And our yeah. tour players awesome. have been loving it. I mean, we launched this thing in, in Las Vegas uh, in fall of, of 22. And I was there for that event. And it was it was our, uh, you know, 80% of our players put it in the first week. And we had a That's couple a wins there early. Some of these tour know? players are hard to get an out of the bag, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And we have yeah. a lot, lot of non-staffers using it. You know, okay. Keegan Bradley won in Japan the second week it was out. And, you know, Seamus Power won uh, right after it came out as well. So our tour players have absolutely loved it. But so the acoustics are phenomenal. The LST has the, we, we call it carbon fly wrap. So, you know, which is saving, you know, four to six grams from the crown. It's harder to save weight in the in a titanium driver because the titanium is already so much lighter density right. than it is in the fairway wood. We have carbon fly wrap in the fairway wood and the hybrid. Okay. Those acoustics are phenomenal as well. That just um, to, but so people aren't confused, that's not a carbon wrap over the top. That's a full piece of carbon. Exactly. Yeah. Wrap, yep. The wrap is around the driver, is, not, yep. not over the not over the crown. Side. The wrap is kind of around the skirt section. So it's gotcha. the whole crown and then kind of around some of the, the skirt section yep. uh, of the driver. And, and the, the green is kind of a little... Uh, modern throw, modern uh, throwback to the Raptor. The Raptor. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's the last time I saw that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we have this, uh, you know, huge CG shifter. This is actually in our in our Alta our HL build, which is the the, the high launch build, which right. combines the Alta quick shaft, a very lightweight shaft. We work with engineering on or a Fuji Curry on the engineering of, but we have this massive CG shifter. Uh, that we, since we launched that technology, this is to move the center of gravity in the head. It the mass is now a lot heavier. So the average how much uh, is that weight? Gram weight in like the LST is like twenty eight grams. Oh, that's substantial. So we barely yeah. have to move it, but we still get like a tenth of an inch of CG movement. Wow. And now why is that important? Is that we can have all of those positions be very elevated in their inertial properties. Right. So, you know, when we first launched the 410, the center position was maximum MOI. But as you went to the heel and toe, the MOI kind of dropped a little bit. Right. Now, because we're making that mass heavier, saving weight from places, we can concentrate it more. And we barely move the weight, but it still moves the CG a yeah. lot. It's 10% right? of the head weight, basically, right? Exactly. Yeah. No, that's a good way to look at it. It's yeah. over 10% of the head weight. Yeah. It is in the back weight, right? Yeah. Um, and so we, we, we have different models, LST, Max, SFT. Um, from a fitting standpoint. Let's touch back to that HL build real quick because I think that's a really important one for us. We struggled with ping um, in last year's and previous year's drivers. They're heavy. They have to be heavy to get great MOI. Um, and, and some of your shafts would counterbalance too. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. A lot of stuff aftermarket is not. So, so we, yeah, it's exactly right. So we're using golf shafts that aren't necessarily designed like you guys, the whole, the whole program yep. to go with the ping head. So at slower swing speeds, people pick this up versus X brand. And they think, oh, man, this is heavy. I can't move it as quick. Yeah. So this is going to open up that world for, for those guys. Exactly. We've done a lot of research on like how to optimize head weight to maximize ball speed. And this, this is a That's little, this, this opens another door, which could be its own pod, but higher moment of inertia is actually more important for your faster swing speed player because the consequences of their mishits are, are that much bigger. Yeah, 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 for sure. Right? Right. Yeah. And, and so this is kind of obvious in hindsight, but we've done some physics modeling and things of that nature to optimize it. So this HL build... You plug in the Alta Quick shaft, which is like a 35 gram shaft, uh, and then you plug in uh, that CG shifter in the back, which is like a I think it's a 
12 or 14 gram weight compared to our standard, which is like 28. Right. So you get you can get the build spec very light in total weight, very light in head weight. You get the head weight down to and ladies and lower club. Yeah, SPs. exactly. Yeah. You know, like 190 head weight instead of 205 type of thing. Oh wow, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a huge difference. That's huge a difference. Bit. That's a lot. Yeah, huge yeah. difference. And then we're also varying our build specs for the max is a little lighter in head weight now. Okay. And, and like, I think one swing weight point lighter. And then the SFT, we went down a couple swing weights. I think the standard now is like C9 where we, before we were like really? D1, okay. right? And that's to kind of get those lighter. So we want to have heavier head weight for the player group that's right. going to need the inertia the most and need that from a momentum standpoint. So that's like mass times velocity. What yep. is the optimal yep. momentum? And we actually used the stack, uh, training aid data that we have really? to help us do some research on figuring out the optimal head weight because this is interesting gotcha right so you can change all the weights and see if the spin speed goes up and down right? exactly yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then different... it's just math it's you know half mass on velocity squared or whatever and you figure Our, out how much energy you get you're spot on and different <laughs> different players have different sensitivities to when you add mass yes right? really yeah. so so normally you're you're on average it's for every 10 grams you add uh, to the head weight, you'll swing it one mile an hour slower. That's on average. But you might be seven tenths in, uh, right, mile an hour right, yeah. per, per 10 grams, and I might be 1.3 per 10 grams. Yep. And how do we figure this out? We literally have two, three million swings in our database with the stack, and that actually helped us feed figuring out the optimal head weight for different, we broke it down to different subgroups of swing speeds. And that's how we optimize the head weights on the G430. By the way, we'll do another video on this stack stuff. This is really cool, too. Um, but it's but, cool just using yeah. big data right, and, right, and exactly. feeding it right into the design yeah, process. Yeah. But right? that's, that's entirely true, right? That's yeah. really cool. So you guys will have, at is, 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 is Cool Clubs, you guys will have kits that have all these right. different CG shifters. Play and around that at the end of the video. Three gram, kind of fine-tune that speed. Three gram good. increments, which yeah. is about one and a half, you know, uh, uh, two swing weights, uh, you know, right yeah. there. You can kind of dial in the head weight. Yeah, that's Perfect. cool. Yeah, I think you guys are going to have a lot of flexibility there. So... Um, now, one of the funnest things that we're using, the really cool face design, one of the coolest things, there's a kind of a, a visual there, the wrap, yeah. Yeah. And how it kind of wraps like a wings around the corners there. Um, for, there's kind of how we did some of the acoustic engineering. We had some huge ribs kind of tra traversing the sole. So not just the LST wow. sounds good. The Max sounds phenomenal as what, well. What are those ribs made out of there? Those, those are in the titanium. Okay. So kind of built into uh, the 3D design right there. Um, and then, yeah, this here, we call it spinsistency. So with the G425, uh, we plug this into the fairway woods yep. um, and the hybrids. But now we've uh, with the G430, we've added to the driver. So this is phenomenal technology. We've done a lot of, we've used our 3D motion capture system, Enzo, mm -hmm. and we figured out how, when players miss hit, what are the face delivery characteristics? And then we could tie that to our ball trajectory model that drives ball dynamic. Right. So that, now you're kind of seeing how all these pieces kind of tie together. Right. And we can say, okay, for players with a certain delivery, uh, how can we change the bulge and roll characteristics based on the model? So the models have different inertial characteristics. So our LST has a little lower inertia relative to our max. <clears throat> how can we change the face shape to get more consistent launch conditions no matter where you hit on the face? So what we did is now the the drivers have a, a tighter uh, roll radius at the bottom of the face. Okay. So you're gonna so when you thin it now with the driver, you're gonna have less loft there in your spin. It's gonna counter the gear effect. It doesn't burn up as much. Your spin yeah. doesn't burn up, and so this is phenomenal. Mark, you're gonna see this on your robot testing for sure. When you hit <laughs> yeah. it lower on the face, right. the spin will be almost exactly the same as is your perfect hit that's, that's, that's huge cool, yeah. that is huge because usually you hit it low in the face oh, give up it, this is business. magic on the golf course well, i miss it high toe you know basically you're, you're out playing go golf and you're on a tight hole it's into the wind and you're I'll like make it pretty good off the fairway too huh yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh so it's phenomenal so you're what you're gonna see in our tour guys have noticed this the launch is slightly more variable but the spin in the trajectory it, like your net impact on your distance is better because right. when you thin it, now you're used to seeing it launch low and balloon up. Yep. It launches low and stays, stays there. The, yeah. Right. But, but you're going to be better for it, but right. it's a new experience as a player. And then when you hit it high on the face, we actually have a little more loft. Why? Because now the, those the spin bounce so much. Yeah. yeah. Cause instead of the spin coming way down, it maintains some of that spin. Got it. Yeah. 
And so uh, this is like magical Is it a technology. consistent radius? I mean, obviously we talk about no. rolling bowls used to be just, you know, one was rolling, one was bowls, and you, you no. ground them with a wooden driver, right? Yeah. Then for a while, it was all kind of like a, you know, think of Uniform. a beach ball. Yeah. And it was whatever radius it is, but, you know, twist face, and you're obviously messing with that too, and it's not consistent throughout. Yeah, no, so this is this is variable. So right. we have a, di a, a different geometry on the bottom and a different geometry on the top. And, in fact, we have a different geometry based on the model. So our max have a different spec than our LST. Right. Because they have different inertial characteristics, How and the player group's out? different, and the headweight's different. So the Enzo feeds that. Enzo yeah. data feeds that. So we're that. all kind of feeding all this, this, this cool. data, these insights, these models, and tying it all together. That's crazy. Doing virtual optimization, and then we, then we, then we build it in the, into the head design. This is my favorite part about the G430 family. A, a the ball speed. You guys are going to see incredible ball speeds. I think people love the G400 driver. It kind of had it, because the LST had a super high uh, a ball speed. Right. And, uh, and and you're going to see that exceeded with the G430. Like the ball speeds are very high from like, the I'm face. I'm not going to get into the USG CT testing and all that stuff, but uh, yeah. You guys are well, well, just there. measure the ball speed. That's all <laughs> yeah, that that's matters. matters right? just, just the ball speed is king. I, I, at the I end would of the get day. an air cannon and start testing <laughs> it, but I don't really want to hear about it. So yeah, <laughs> it's probably a little early. But what are the guys on tour been playing? The Max or the LST? Mostly the LST. Mostly okay. the LST. Uh, a for the sound. B for the spin. I mean, they're, they're kind of in the. Yeah. We designed that to kind of be in the sweet spot of what they need from a spin standpoint. And the inertia is still really high, right? It's not like the LST is low inertia and the max is high inertia. They're no, you don't do what some companies do where they come out with a tour version or whatever, and it's smaller, no. less forgiving considerably. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah. I, I don't know why you're less forgiving. I don't yeah. care how good you are. But, uh, so this consistency is really fun. And, it, and you can measure this in a fitting. So you take your TrackMan number right. and your, your, your plus or minus of spin. That's the tile you want to look at. So you can if, have somebody come in with their gamer driver, hit like 10 shots or whatever, cycle them through, then have them hit the G430 uh, and have them hit it. And you look at that plus or minus of spin, compare that to their yeah. gamer, their current one. Right. G430 which, which translates into a tighter landing area. Tighter, yes. Right? And more and more, more distance. Yeah. Because well, now we, you yeah, we look at that I mean, for drivers, yeah. right? So actually I took you know, kind of forgiving this on drivers and don't really think about this, but you know, two ways, right? There's right and left. It's yep. important, but also the front oh, bend, yeah. And a driver, probably right and left, is more important than distance. Yeah. You know, yeah. Out of bounds doesn't really help you score any. No, but an iron, obviously, you know, they're both are just as important. Yeah. So it depends on how you weight that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So so spin consistency is spin yeah, exactly consistency. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. how okay. consistent is the spin when you hit it high and low on the face and left and right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got to give this a go because I hit it on the bottom rail a lot. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then CG shifter. I mean, I mean, we've done a lot of research there to show that one way to get more distance is to zero out your spin axis and your curve. I know right. when, when you're doing yeah. your ball dynamic fitting market, that's what you like, yeah, and, yeah. and that's a smart thing. We like that's a smart thing for golfers. It's a, it's a secret way to add distance to the players. You know, they don't need to hit the high toe ball. To, to, to hit their furthest drive anymore. We can yeah. get them in the right model, hit them in the center yeah. of the face and zero out the curve and it's a way to get more distance. So, I mean, it's just a, a, a fitting horsepower built in here. We can fit model, we can fit uh, swing weight, we can fit with the CG shifter, obviously we, with the shaft, with the loft. Right. I mean, there's just so many things you can do. Here's the here's the new draw plus position in the, uh, in the SFT yeah. version of the driver. I think there'll be a lot of those drivers with that position attached. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there should be. Yeah, there should be way. attached. It's yeah. amazing. We don't sell as many draw bar, you know, biased drivers as we should. Yeah. You know? yeah. We got some pretty decent golfers for the most part. So not as much as most play. But, you know, if you really think about it, yeah. I mean, 90% or at least 80% of the population probably ought to be playing a draw driver. Yeah. Right. right? Exactly. And, and they're not. Well, what's fun about <laughs> it, what's fun about the our technology now is that somebody can need a low spin head and draw and you can do yeah. it. You, you can yeah. you can you can use our LST. You put the CG shifter in the draw position, which is basically like making an SFT driver the pass from us. That's perfect. And then you can lighten the head weight by putting in a lighter back weight. So you, you just have so much flexibility yeah. with our builds from a fitting standpoint. Then you could uh, close the face and add some loft with the trajectory tuning sleeve if you wanted to, and et cetera, et cetera. So, awesome. Cool. Yeah, What's a lot, a lot of tech in the driver. Take us through to, to the Wood family. Yeah, so the Wood family, let me see if I can get it. The, the Wood family is phenomenal as well. So we have that spin consistency technology built into all, all right. the woods. Um, the fairway woods have a, a super high ball speed. I think we made a really concerted effort uh, with this family to lower the center of gravity. 
So we actually save way more weight with the carbon fly wrap in the fairway wood and the hybrid than we do even do on the driver because you're trading off steel versus titanium right. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've lowered the center of gravity significantly. And then we've done that same face shape optimization. So you get a spin system face. Right. So we're, we, we've been able to add more loft. So now our, our, our max fairway wood has 15 degrees of loft. So we can launch it high. The center of gravity is low. Feels like you're getting under the ball. Our players have seen super high ball speeds and they're launching it higher from the loft, but they're getting low spin from the center of gravity being lower. In the acoustics... Well, hitting thin fairy woods, that happens. A lot oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're missing painful. the fairy woods. You know, you don't have a fat fairy wood because, you know, it's bad no matter what happens. Yeah. You hit the ground first. But it is uh, thin ones happen a lot. Yeah. Important. So tell, tell us why there's no Toby lighters on the fairways. Well, now we have, uh, you know, a different uh, face structure design. So we have this Miraging C300 face, face wrap technology. So that C300 face wraps around uh, the sole and the crown. And this is a Miraging C300. This is a, this is a steel they use in uh, fighter pilots and landing gear because it's both strong and flexible at gotcha. the same time. It has a low modulus. So that's rare. Usually you, you have a stronger material and it gets stiffer. And correct me yeah, if I'm yeah. wrong too, on a, on a ferry wheel, which is much shallower face than a driver considerably, you don't have the turbulent, you don't have the air exactly. dynamic issues that you do with a driver. Yeah. Right. It, I mean, it basically you a driver, a you got a tiny... big face, you're trying to push through the wind and that, that's Exactly. <laughs> it, 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 it gave a tiny benefit, but yeah. you know, it's kind of there for you to kind of make it look like Law the other diminishing ones. diminishing returns. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so we have that Miraging C300 face that wraps around to the sole and the crown and so when you impact, that, that material is amazing because you can get a lot of flex, but it's also very strong so we can make it thin. Yeah. And, and normally you go stronger and you get brittle or you'd have to go you know, weaker to get more flexible. So right. it's, it's just kind of a really cool combination of materials uh, from a face design standpoint. And hybrids similar? Or? Hybrids similar, and the hybrids go really far. Okay. <laughs> really far. And so we've they've gone, but they pair with the irons because the irons now go really, really far, far as well. <laughs> so we're always making sure the hybrid designer and the iron yeah, designer, yeah, yeah. True, they actually. need to be they in lockstep. Because yeah, Titleist a couple years ago started launching irons and hybrids together, which I thought made sense. And you guys kind of do the similar thing. Yeah, we got to be but, really on top of how yeah. they gap. Yeah, right, exactly. that's a, yeah. it's very important. So and you have a lot of hybrids. So a good one, I think your highest lofted hybrid in this range is going to be thirty-four degrees. Yeah, seven hybrid. Right, seven oh, wow. hybrid. So we go all the way from a two to a seven, and we and we engineer them differently depending on those lofts. Like the two and the three, these are going to be better players. Right. The left-right biases and the CG placement is going to be a little bit different. Then the five, six, seven, you know, are just magical for right. your everyday golfer to get that thing in the air, get spin on it, and players are loving it. So then can you throw an eight iron straight under the seven hybrid and you're good? Yes, you can yeah. do that. So if you're playing so they're actually, Yeah, because that's not the case all the time. Yeah. Right? So we have a four hybrid that doesn't go like a four iron, it goes like a three iron. Yes, know, so. exactly. So this is an important gapping uh, topic. I'm glad you brought it up. So if you if you have a golfer going from G4 30 irons, eight iron, they can go right into the G4 37 down through in hybrids. Right, now, if easier. somebody is playing I230 and they're going down to, let's say, five iron, they're going to need to play the five hybrid yes. right. because it goes that much yep. further. And this is so hard in a fit in when you're telling a, you know, a player, yeah. you need a five hybrid and a five iron. They're like, well, I've got two fives. And you're yep. like, well, you yep. know, they go different distances. So, they do different things. So if you're in, in, a, in our family, if you're in blueprint, if you're in I-59, if you're in I-230, those you got to play, you know, the stack hybrid, them. you got to stack them. Yep. If you're in G710, and especially if you're in G430, our hybrids are designed to gap and blend perfectly with the G430 irons because right. those are going really far. That's nice. That's yeah. nice. Really but that's a good, really good uh, question and, and, and kind of fitting, you know, story to tell. Yeah. There yeah. With right. uh, what's, is there any different tech in the hybrids versus the, the fairways or the driver? They share a lot of the similar technology. So you see the carbon fly wrap right. here that's on the, uh, the fairway woods. The, the hybrids is constructed very similar, right? Yeah. Very similar in terms of having that carbon fly wrap. Uh, you can see the spin consistency. That's a different kind of face design. So it's the same thing that's happening. That is really important on a hybrid too. In a fairway wood, when you thin it, especially a hybrid where you're, you, you're hitting it into the green and you thin it, now you're not going to get that major spin spike. It's going to be better in the wind. These are some of the things that I think historically, uh, if, if, you've, if a golfer's had a bad experience with hybrids in the past, give yourself permission to try these because you won't have those things. Like, oh, I thin it. It gets too crazy in the wind. Yeah. You're not going to have that experience with, with the new face technology design. They could do all the things with the trajectory tuning sleeve. And then we have a lot of models. You know, I right. think that the SFT, that's our straight fly. That's our more draw bias, so to speak. 
and it has more loft on it, so it's more like a four wood, right? Yeah. You're, you're really we call it a three wood, but it's really more yeah. like you know the loft of a four wood. Um, and then you can fit loft and both loft and lie angle with the trajectory tuning sleeve. And then we also have those HL builds here with the. How do they uh, go through the family? They go yes. through fairways and hybrids. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep, and you can see we even color the back weight differently, and we laser etch high launch on it. Got it. So in the driver, I think it's a 12 gram weight right here in the fairway hybrid. It's a five and a half gram weight and we pair it with the Alta quick and even a lightweight grip. So the whole system mass gets, yeah, yeah. gets lighter. So you guys, I think you guys are going to have some fun. She's going to like that a lot. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. She's, yeah. Those she layers and she's good at it. That. So she's really going gonna to love that. that. So yeah, there's, there's a, a picture of the hybrid there and the, and the acoustics are awesome. I would say arguably better in the fairway and hybrid than even the driver. Okay. They're, they're, they're all good. Yeah. But the three wood, I was hitting the three wood last weekend in the five wood. Yeah. In, I've, I've man, currently got a three wood that I, I like. I kind of hit it at miles and stuff. I haven't tried this one yet, obviously, but uh, I hate the sound of the thing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Around no, this it. is just satisfying. I get both. To the that's soul, good. You know? is, the, is the reason why there's, there's a smaller space in there? Does that create a better sound? Yeah. Yeah. The volume is different. It's not shaking as much, you know, yeah. and as big as the is the driver. Yeah. So, and, and the composite is a bigger percentage of the overall club, right? It's, it's right. more surface area. It's right. a bigger percentage. So it's having a bigger impact on the, you know, the vibration damping yeah. that's happening cool. throughout there. And then the irons, uh, man, let's go. These had the some irons. tech because I think there's a tab at the top there. You can hit it. Yeah, and it'll throw go right up here to the irons, man. The irons are absolutely phenomenal. So the irons, I mean, look at that thing, pure flex badge. So wow. what's happening with this iron? We're getting tons of face deflection. So we, we, our irons. You can think about irons in two different families. A, the irons that you, the player, bring the speed to the table. You know, this is the right. blueprints, the I-230s, yeah. I-59s. Mostly you're you're bringing it, the speed to the table. And then we have our irons where the club's going to help give you some distance, right. right? And this is now our maximum. The 430 gives you the maximum amount of distance infusion. So we're getting more flexing out of the face with the variable face design. And then we've actually, this badge is kind of like a living badge. You can see how it has all these different segments to it. It's cut. Yeah, it looks in like all a these you know, cement sidewalk or something with some yeah. uh, you know, lines in it to give it some exactly. flexibility. This yeah. is like you're on a bridge. You, know, you walk across yeah. a bridge. You don't want your bridge too stiff. You want it to kind of move right. and, and flex with you. Um, so that's exactly how this face is designed. Huh. When the ball's interacting with the face, all those little pieces uh, are now decoupled and we actually get the face to move more. Yeah, but right. we use the badge to help get the feel really good, just a little bit like what we talked about with the with yeah. the two thirties. I was right? going to say, if you really wanted the face to move, you strip everything off the back, but it sounds bad. exactly right. yes. So now we're creating, we're allowing the face to really flex a lot, and we're getting a massive amount of distance with this iron. Without uh, it sound terrible. <laughs> without it sound terrible, and then the other thing is the iron is going really really high because this iron has a technology in it. Um, that our 425 handed a little bit called law flexing. So while the ball is impacting the face, the face actually flexes backwards as if the club had two degrees more loft on it okay. during the impact interval. So you're getting gotcha. a little flexing in and a little diving board back. So yep. you're getting a trampoline diving board combined. Gotcha. So the ball, so you're going to see high distance. Like I think our testing has shown the, the, I mean, I hit this thing literally about 12 yards further than the predecessor. Uh, wow. I think your everyday player is going to see like seven to eight yards more distance with this iron. Seven but still iron keeping seven the height iron. and the landing angle you want. And it goes steeper. That's even better. Yeah, that's it will thing. land steeper. So it's super cool. Yeah. yeah. So um, we strengthened the loft and seven iron a little bit. I think it's one degree stronger. And then we this set, we had to do it, Mark. We added another <laughs> yeah. wedge. We had, we had to do it <laughs> based on the Arcos yes, data. Yeah, yeah. So this goes you know, through pitching wedge. And then we have a 45, 50, 54, 58. And what right. I do like about the way you've done this is that you've written the numbers on the bottom of the wedge yes. rather than yeah, that's U and W. Because there's we, some out there that are a T and a G and an A and a oh, w, yeah. which w one's which. W1, one, W2, you know, yeah. you know all that yeah. stuff. Customers don't know which one's which. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I'm so glad to hear that from you guys because yeah. we debated that for the no, longest no, I, time. No, no, I like totally it. Totally the right way to go. <laughs> yeah. 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 The higher level one goes higher. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, that's good. People so, can count better than they can spell, apparently. That's what it is. I'm sure I can do that. That's 100% You will be a prime example of that. Every 20 to 30 years, you got to add a wedge. And then yeah. now was the time. We yeah. had to do okay. it from a gapping standpoint because yeah. they they go far. So you go to pitch, then you go to 45, then you go to 50. And, uh, and golfers are going to absolutely love this iron. I mean, I mean the distance and the height. I mean, we should well, almost say too. we should almost yeah. say this iron goes higher 
And by the way, it also goes seven or eight yards further. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah well, that's, well, more, that's more, what most people really need. Right? They, need they need that. Height. They need they stop need the it. ball. Yeah. I mean, it's great to have a seven iron. You know, it goes, you know, 160. Even if you're only swinging, you swing at, you know, 70 miles an hour. But yeah. you know, if it rolls 20 yards, that's the thing. I think how do you do that? Your average golfer isn't really in touch with the, the carry distance. Right. They, they look and they say, oh, my total distance is, is this. Whereas if you get something flying further, that's re that's really tangible on the golf course because all of a sudden they're over the bunker, they they they've landed near the green. When it's bundling there, yeah, you, you know, they just don't really know what you're going to get from different golf courses. So yeah. it's really important to land it further. Again, the gapping is like not an exciting thing to talk about, but we yeah. but it, it, and it's hard to test or see it in a fitting environment. But these iron, this is going to be our best gapped G iron because we did we you know we got more distance out of them. And then as we do that, you're always trying to figure out, okay, you're creating, bit, yeah. yeah, and from what we hear, this is really interesting. So what we see in our Arcos data is um, whether you're a slow swing speed player, medium or high, you see this distribution of where golfers hit their second shots on par fours and where they're teeing off on par threes. And the peak of that curve is, you know, starts to grow at 170, 160, then it peaks out about 155, 150, and then it tapers back down. So no matter oh, where you tee off, everyone's kind of hitting it to about 155 yards out. And so this is very important for us in club design because we were, you know, and I think some of the competitor products, they're creating bigger gaps right where people are hitting most of their shots. So with this, we put another wedge in there right. in more short iron, you know, tighter spacing in the short irons driven by where we're seeing play, people play on course through Hun literally hundreds of millions of shots of different types of players. That's a huge advantage with all the Arcos data. We're, we're putting tighter spacing where players are are, right. are hitting most of their shots into the green. I see this in the pro ams I play in all the time. Mark, you know, I'll play with a guy that got some juice iron set, and they're like, you know, they're 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 hit their um, pitching. They'll, they'll be at 120 yards out, and they won't have a club. They'll be like, well, my pitching wedge goes 155, and my right. sandwich goes 100. You know, you're oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but well, they're there all day long. Missing, you're like, that doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. You know, so, yeah. so anyway, so you know, I think we see it, you know, uh, anecdotally, but to have the yeah. data there. So oh yeah, hey, that's great. So Wonderful. so we're using that data again. I think what what's cool is that we're using the data directly to feed the design. Yeah, you know? that's awesome. The players are driving the, the design process. Exactly. Just, yeah. yeah. So different, different groups of players, obviously, for different models. So. Yes, yeah. and we have we would split it down, and we had the data scientists to have a field day. I saw that. Day, it, I had it kind of separated know. as you know, better, scratch or better, but kind of or zero, yeah. zero better. Uh, one to eight, I think you had. And yeah, in ball nine to something yeah. over sixteen. So, yep. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out right now the how I'm going to break ours out and something along those lines. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Yep. Well, talk a little bit about the shape. I, I have a vague memory of the sole design being a little different. Yeah, uh, the sh the, the, uh, our G irons have gotten better and better looking, you know, right. throughout the years. Yeah. And what we found, so, so super high inertia, what we found is the smaller you make the iron, no matter what skill level of player, they tend to uh, tighten their impact stat area. It's a, kind of a weird phenomenon, a little bit of active research for us. But like if you if we gave you blueprints compared to I2 tens that, that you know, that you've played, your stat area would tighten just from hitting the blueprint. Like there's a little bit of like, just like focus and consequence and, you know, uh, mm. everything to be had with that. So I, what, what we, tr what we're doing with the G430, even though it's our mega forgiving iron, we've kind of shortened the blade lengths a little bit every generation, as long as we can get the moment of inertia up. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and we think that's yeah, a benefit to the golfer. Look smaller and better. That's, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I think I feel like a player's, you know, whatever you judge a bad golfer as, I don't think they still want to look down at something enormous. I think they like yeah. looking down at something. Well, apparently, it sounds like looking down at something enormous also makes them hit it all over the place. Yeah, so yeah. that's not exactly good, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we're trying to find that sweet spot, like yeah. big enough so we can get the inertia. But if right. you make it too big, they're going to hit it all over the face, right? Yeah. Um, and then we also have our Hydro Pearl 2.0 finish on this iron. We do have tighter spacing grooves similar to those Micro Max grooves. Yeah, same finish. Uh, yeah, same finish. Okay. So we get that all the. Um, yeah. You know, fly reduction, all weather performance and wet dry conditions, really good distance control. And I think what's fun about our iron is that it goes high. We have that loft flexing. It's a distance iron, but it doesn't have hot spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a like it's hot without hot spots because right. yeah. you don't want that. You know, you, yeah, you know certain brands out there that I get to, and I, I kind of use handicap as a as a as a range sometimes, but also um, speed and then like a, a reasonably high speed player using some of these you know. 
hollow iron, let's call them, mm -hmm. and then they hit one and it just goes 20 yards further than anything they've hit in the session. And you're like, if they do that on the golf course, that's a bad day. Yeah. yeah. That's a double. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Especially in Arizona, over the green is not good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then yeah. that's where that's we desert. use things like our robot testing, like you do, yeah. to make sure that performance when you hit high and low on the face, you're, you know, we're controlling the flexing and getting yeah. the right carry distance, but not having the hot spots. Yeah. Like we, don't, we don't want that. That's real good. So um, I think golfers can trust that, and you guys will see that when you start fitting the iron. So. I mean, across the board, this the G430 family is the biggest overall gain in an entire product family. So what we did is we added up the distance increase. If you add distance gain in a driver, distance gain in a fairway wood, distance gain in, the, in a hybrid, you know, let's say an average set makeup, and the total gain across that whole thing for everyday players like 30 yards. Wow. Right? You add that up, driver, fairway wood, hybrid, yeah. and you multiply that out yeah. times, you know, all your rounds of golf. Well, it sounds like your data-driven stuff from Narcos Research is kind of really helping us. Yeah. Start, no, you've been doing that for good. a number of years now, so yeah. you're kind of learning how to use it too. So. Yeah, and feeding the system, yeah. right? So that's this is our biggest overall gain from any product family we've launched to date. And, uh, yeah. it's, it sounds like there's a lot of technology. You know, we've talked about this probably for half an hour now. So it's, you know, it's a lot going on with the product. Yeah. Awesome. Looking and, forward you know, to it. During COVID, it gave us a little extra time to put a little more, oh, yeah, a, a, sneak a few more technologies in there. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a kind of an unintended consequence. But, uh, yeah, super excited, excited to get it in everyone's hands. And uh, I've got to get over there and do some pre testing before it goes yeah, live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, awesome. thank you so much for coming out again, mate. It's been great. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks for having me. Enjoyed Appreciate it. it. Thanks. Cheers.